In today's episode, I'll show you how to create the powerful empire of Sardinia Piedmont from the Italian Duchy of Savoy. I achieved this through a careful strategy and specific ideas, which I'll discuss more later. Welcome imperialists, this is Lucas. Starting with Savoy, we have a lot to do with our diplomats, of whom we only have two. It's crucial to form an alliance with Austria, for which we need the religious diplomats privilege. Also, if available, we can use an advisor with a diplomatic reputation for support. I'm forming a royal marriage with Austria and will soon secure an alliance. Another important alliance is with the Pope. The better our relations with the papacy, the more influence we'll gain in the Curia. Here, it says so. I'm also forming an alliance with France, which is lucky, because they're not Austria's rival. Unfortunately, France competes with Castile, so I can't ally with them. It's a shame, because Spain could have helped with the conquest of the Kingdom of Aragon, as seen later in the mission tree on the left. I'm not setting rivals in the first month. I'll wait to see how the global situation unfolds before taking diplomatic action. Now, back to the estates. I choose all the monarchy points, all the cheaper advisors and the privilege allowing us to send a delegation to the papacy for more papal influence, which gives us even more papal influence. Among the nobility, I'll choose strong duchess, since we start with two vassals. Supremacy over the crown and a chance for a better general are also useful, as we'll face more wars in this campaign. From the start, I'm focusing on loans, economic freedom and tax support. I use a trick for cheaper advisors, prioritizing the military advisor, and finally I'll also take land. Our ruler is quite good, but the the heir is terrible, so let's say he had an accident. After getting rid of the heir, I introduce a privilege to increase our prestige. Early in the campaign, I'm lucky because Burgundy doesn't consider me a rival, which is very fortunate. However, I was worried about losing my alliance with France. What would you do, dear viewer? Would you ally with Burgundy and aim for a personal union? Or prefer an alliance with France? I'm also recruiting my army to its limit and plan not to wage wars for the first two years. So I'm turning off forts and reducing military maintenance. Surprise! France quickly broke its alliance with Provence, so I immediately made Provence my rival. Along with Genoa and Milan as my last rival, I decided to take a risk and ally with Burgundy because who doesn't risk doesn't have fun. Besides, I have a certain mission regarding Burgundy. Returning to the Savoy missions, unfortunately, none of the first missions offer territorial claims, so we can't quickly engage in conquests. Therefore, I'm sending my diplomats to Genoa and Provence. My king's council currently looks like this. Yes, I definitely prefer taxes. Then, I made several national decisions, especially seeking influence with the Pope. I got a very good general from the nobility. Honestly, I didn't expect to secure all these alliances. I removed all the cavalry from my army because we won't need it, mainly because it was too expensive. I also responded to a call to war alongside France, which is good for me. I'll let my vassals fight this war while I focus on Provence, since Genoa formed a strong alliance, at least initially. I'm sending troops to that province without really knowing how to pronounce it. I'm targeting it because capturing it will cost less in war score and it's the most valuable of the two I can claim. I immediately declared war on Provence after making claims. I sent my diplomat to improve relations with Burgundy and later probably France. Oh no, I have to defend my vassal as they were attacked. I screwed up. I screwed up so bad. But I managed to win beautifully the second time. I hired a mercenary company to replace the fallen. I didn't want to upset the Pope. Unfortunately, the Papal States and Burgundy also attacked Provence, even Britain. After the capital fell, I had only one choice. No, not making Provence my vassal because that would lead to a... Uh tough wars and I didn't want them. So I only took three provinces, humiliated my rival and took a lot of money from them. I didn't integrate the new territories immediately. Provence will cease to exist soon and then I'll release it again as my vassal. I had to sacrifice my alliance with Austria for one with Burgundy, which was a bit controversial. Later Provence ceased to exist and I couldn't release it because I was still at war with England. I bought indulgences from the papacy to improve relations. They liked my money. I heard terrible news. The monarchy was overthrown in Milan. I couldn't let such a wealthy region become a democracy, so I decided to intervene and restore the monarchy. The new pope was old and from France, so I invested in my candidate. I got investment funds from other war participants to develop my country and gained the province of Novara and Milan's capital from Milan. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough resources to restore the monarchy there, despite my good intentions. I chose diplomatic ideas as my first policy choice, although espionage ideas were also a good alternative. However, my focus is on improving diplomacy. Unfortunately, the alliance with Burgundy didn't last because they wanted my territories. Too bad. Luckily, restoring the alliance with Austria was easy. My main goals now are to integrate my vassals and gain influence points with my two allies, France and the Papacy, to reclaim Provence territories. Provence has a powerful mission that grants them territorial claims over all of Naples as core lands if they reach 100 development points. I'm missing some. Oh, 
Oh god, so much is happening. Interesting, France attacked Burgundy. The Shadow Kingdom event in March 1460 decided whether the Italian part of the empire wants to leave. Meanwhile, I integrated the Geneva area and unified the Piedmont region. While allied with the emperor, I chose to stay in the empire. Unlike most of my neighbors, pretty much everyone, yada yada yada, lots of reading. The heart of our duchy is in Cambrai. The Occitan culture will become our main culture or something like that. It doesn't matter. We have the right culture to complete this national mission. I asked the papacy to return Avignon to Provence, which they agreed to, giving me control over the Provence region and many territorial claims in southern France, which I might not use. It's just so sad. I decided to seize the opportunity to acquire Roussillon for Provence. Thanks to my diplomacy, all conquests were justified. I might also try to take Sardinia and something in Sicily. Burgundy seems to have shrunk significantly. My territories expanded a bit after the war with Aragon, releasing Catalonia as another vassal. I immediately transferred three Sardinian provinces to Provence and started preparing for an invasion of Tunis. After achieving splendor, my conquests became more justified. However, I had to slow down with conquests in Italy and with Catholic countries for about 10 years due to diplomacy. Since I have time, I am now improving relations with the smaller Italian principalities, hoping that some will agree to peacefully become our vassals, especially since our diplomatic reputation is on the rise. I'm also working on increasing France's trust in us, as the petitioning of Burgundy is also going well in the meantime. I will expand workshops in each of our provinces where it is profitable. It's time to focus on Tunis and possessions in Africa. As you can see, my fleet has heavy ships, which should be able to handle those galleys. Can you handle it? They can. I don't know what happened here, but I have another opportunity. A few new republics have emerged and Genoa hasn't lost any wars. How did this happen? A mystery we'll probably never solve. Assault! And now I'm sending more armies here. A last minute rebellion on Malta. And we succeeded. We are now the Pope. This gives us a lot of bonuses worth fighting for. My second conquest target after Tunis will be Tlemcen, so I'm declaring a holy crusade against it. As Pope, I can do such things. As Pope, I've issued a papal bull that reduces the cost of the Curia by 50%. Here they are. I had to return to the motherland for a moment because someone wanted to conquer Provence. I hope I make it in time. Of course, I didn't. From Tunis, I'm conquering a lot, and almost no one cares, but it's calculated. After conquering most of Tunis's territory, I'm also transferring some newly conquered provinces to Provence. But not too much. Just enough for them to have 100 development points. Almost there. And finally, Provence has created a claim on Naples, which means we can reclaim it all. I just have to manage the alliance between Naples and France somehow. I think I have an opportunity. Yes, but now I could call my vassals to this war and let them do all the work for me. Ugh, even more reading. In the meantime, I'm vassalizing Cyprus. The armies of Florence and Luca are currently in Sardinia, and they won't go anywhere else. Quick invasion. I liberate Naples. The world doesn't care. And Naples remained in Siena. What don't you understand? And right after these conquests, I begin the process of integrating Provence into our nation. It will take about 12 years. At the same time, I chose more ideas. They will be humanistic, because they will greatly improve our ability to improve diplomacy worldwide. I also acquired a lot of vassals. For some reason, everyone suddenly started agreeing to be my vassal. It can finally be said that I overdid it a lot. But even Luca, how many countries want this Genua? I won't say. And honestly, I want it too. And since the world has calmed down a bit with my conquests, I'm going on their conquest myself only. Why does Lithuania guarantee independence here? I didn't expect that. It's a really long journey from Lithuania to me, but we're heading there. Vilnius fell quickly, but for some reason Lithuania still wants to fight, but it's over for them. Unfortunately, most of the money went to my allies. I conquered Genoa and I'm now establishing my rule there. Very slowly, Meanwhile, I'm also converting a province in Tunis. It's going really slowly for now, but soon our ideas will develop. And after developing humanistic ideas, I won't even have to do this. From France, I'll only take back one province, unfortunately. It's a shame I won't use the rest of my claims, but I integrated Provence too quickly. We integrated Provence, and I have to admit, more pink. And it would be almost the perfect moment to leave the Holy Roman Empire. Almost perfect, because I still have to get rid of the Castilian-Austrian alliance. I also took the opportunity to destroy my army. I declared war unprepared. But no, Florence has no allies, and I will take advantage of that. Now, we've completed some of our missions, but I had already completed all these missions before, so we've really stirred things up. Honestly, who needs a union with Naples when you have Provence next door? 
After converting to the Tunis province, I plan to add some of them to a trading company, especially those with trade bonuses. The rest, not necessarily. No, I won't conquer Florence, too bad. But I'll release two countries because I can make them my ally and then vassal. Instead of a casus belli on Florence, I prefer to improve relations with all the surrounding countries. Then I'll finish integrating all my vassals at once. Except for the last one, I'll start integrating him right at the end. Leonardo da Vinci has appeared in my court. How nice! The time has come to prepare for war with Spain, so let's stripper of all allies. Oh, I can do it once? There might be a war with the papacy. Maybe France alone will be enough in this war. Luckily, I bought indulgences, so the Pope should forgive me. I think it's also a good moment to finally leave the empire. It will almost certainly anger the current emperor, but now I don't really care. The Burgundian succession happened and those three provinces went to Austria. France's offensive seems to be going our way. I hope Luca doesn't give up that province because it must be mine. If France has it, that would be really bad. I've achieved so much luck and prestige that I can announce we are no longer the Duchy of Savoy, but a kingdom. This allows me to conquer more. Uh, things aren't going well in Maghreb, neither in Naples. Time to liberate smaller countries from the papacy. I really can't believe it. 100 points of aggressive expansion and nobody cares. Probably because I've already conquered most of Italy. Colonialism has emerged and Siena has become our vassal. I'm getting a bit tired of rolling my diplomatic advisors, literally changing every month from diplomatic reputation to improving relations to lower aggressive expansion faster. Interesting. No, I quickly managed to take Portugal out of the war. No, the French ally is worth a lot. Just goes around and destroys everything Spain has. And they don't have much army left. So I've allowed myself to start sieging all of Spain. We ended the war with Castile in a total victory, taking Aragon and nobody really cares. Yes, the kingdom of Aragon is now my vassal, click, click, click. Unexpectedly, Talifala will also be ours. However, I decided not to waste a slot on it because I need to acquire the gold mine for myself. So I've caught a lot of minor vassals, which I'll integrate you in 10 years. At this point, the Mediterranean Sea is split between Savoy and the Ottoman Empire. We'll have to deal with this competitor. From now until the end of the game, annexation is 10% cheaper, though I must admit my earnings are pathetic at the moment, partly because I neglected the autonomy in my country. It happens. Luckily, aggressive expansion decreases very fast. Two years after Aragon, practically nobody remembers it. I can finally afford to reasonably expand my fleet. We'll focus on heavy ships since we have a small fleet limit but can have more than 12 ships. This is especially useful for a war with Venice, which always has a strong fleet. I could conquer many African provinces, though not really, just one. Again, I'm not the Pope. Then we destroy the Portuguese army. Taking the opportunity, we excommunicate Venice and attack immediately. It's strange. The world is upset about Margraviate, but ignored Aragon. It seems I have no choice but to call Austria into this war as they are positioning to attack. We capture the first fortress. My fleet stands no chance against their gigantic fleet. We need more ships. The French army is not recovering well, but it's good for suppressing rebellions. We managed to defeat the Phoenician fleet because it wasn't here. We might be able to land on the island. We got it. Now we run because they are coming back. The Austrian fleet is deployed. Honestly, I won't conquer as much as I thought. We'll wait until December to take Venice. The Republic probably won't survive this. Another round of consuming vassals. I can't believe how silly I can be sometimes. I forgot to distribute additional taxes. Sorry, but it was a really sluggish day when I recorded this episode. Now I have a long period ahead of suppressing rebellions and catching up on administrative technology. Do we have any economic missions here for us? Just con and conquest. Not conquest of Burgundy, conquest of Venice, conquest of Cyprus. All about conquests. Oh, glory to Savoy. But this is not the trade note I thought. Oh my god, have I been this foolish? Was I really collecting in champagne all this time? Let's correct this mistake. By the way, the Protestant Reformation is happening and I'm actually planning to convert to Protestantism. It's a strong religion right now and will be even better for us, especially when we get further reputation and diplomatic reputation improvements at the fourth reform level. Fixing the trade capital mistake immediately improved our market shares. I'll start converting my country, starting with the provinces that give me the most religious unity to minimize production penalties. I wasn't supposed to go to war, but I couldn't help it. I want to finish the conquest of Tofali and Tunis. Money from Portugal? The first privilege I'll grant is, of course, missionary strength. We have a lot to convert. Now our borders look much better. I wonder if the same dynasty will connect me with the Austrian Emperor. Very interesting. I'll grant a privilege to increase religious tolerance in my country. I think it could be useful. I must admit, I've acquired some new vassals. And there's still the conquest of Bosnia, but it's a bit too big. And Aragon is becoming very dis 
disloyal. Just before the end of the previous era, I launched the Sabaudian Golden Age. The third idea is offensive, because I plan to conquer a lot this era, and a better army will be slightly useful. Though, influence and administrative ideas would also be very good for us, especially combined, so I'll probably choose them next. The final fall of Venice. I'm taking advantage of Spain not having an army in Spain, as only 15,000 of their 63,000 troops were on the continent. As you can see, it quickly falls under my occupation. All for the money and breaking their alliance with Austria so I can conquer even more from them later. Oh, I found it some kind of holy order. The first development of this era is definitely the religious wars. Since there's a temporary peace in my country, I emphasize temporary, I can finally form Sardinia Piedmont, and I really want their traditions and ambitions. What an aquamarine color. Oh no, our missions remain unchanged. They include cheaper ideas, improved relations, stronger diplomacy, a stronger military, the ability to core and develop more cheaply, and less aggressive expansion at the end. Hey, these are different from what's on wiki. Otherwise, I would have done this earlier. Just forming Sardinia Piedmont really increased my income by about 30 gold. I see that in Iberia, unfortunately, hmm, there's emerging competition for the conquest of Castile. And now we have the chance to conquer Rome since the Pope finally lost all his stronger allies. And I'll take advantage of that. For a moment, we'll reduce my aggressive expansion gain. And remember, there's a second bonus here. Let's loot all the treasures of the Curia. After all, we paid so much there. And now everything will be ours. I can finally become an empire. Oh my god, but I'll still anger the world. A lot. There wouldn't be a coalition if I had fully developed ideas. But oh well, I'm not gonna wait to conquer Rome. Ah, well, it would make things easier now and in the game. But Poland in the coalition? I didn't expect that. Luckily, I have Alpine fortifications they likely won't get past. And finally, we've become the power of the south. This mission is really powerful. Our empire looks beautiful after integrating my most important vassals. And it must be said, the Mediterranean Basin is essentially divided between two countries at this moment. Are we heading for a showdown? Is a certain empire to be reborn? I don't know. We'll see. But in this episode, I show a mystery form of government for Poland and how to obtain it thanks to civil war events. This is a very strong start to conquering the world with Poland.